Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. But what's going on in such a person? What's going on in someone who's not asking for help, but sort of intimating? They're giving you the sense that they want help without actually asking for it. But they make it look like they're asking for help. And then you go, oh, they're trying to get help. And then you give them a bunch of help. How likely are they to actually use it if they never really ask for it? Hi, it's Joseph. And thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. This episode is short and sweet and gives you some very simple ways to help anyone more effectively. Ever have the experience that someone asks you for help and then they don't use what you give them? Get ready to never have that experience again because you're going to discover what you've been doing to support that behavior and what to do instead. Keep listening to find out more. For more information about the many benefits of clear and open membership and how to get the help you need in conversations like this, please go to clearandopen.com. Now let's dive in. And asking for help is one of those things there should be a whole class on that in high school, how to ask for help well, because as, as a species, we're really not so good at it. Typically, we either ask for, we don't ask for help enough. That's usually the obvious one. Or we ask for help in ways that is not quite the best way to ask for help, like wanting to be told what to do. If, if you ever ask me a question, if you email me a question, and, and many of you have, and I hand back the question to you in some way, what that means is you asked for help in a way where you wanted me to give you an answer. Often, not always. But I got a question from someone just recently that it, it wasn't even a question. It was a statement. It was an observation about something with a parenthetical question in it. Like they wanted to know what I thought about it, but didn't ask. And that's a really interesting phenomenon. Notice if anyone who you interact with or uh, employees you have do that, because it's a way of asking for help without actually inhabiting the vulnerability of asking for help. And I won't answer that. I won't respond to that. Can anybody guess, guess why or see why? Why is it important to make people ask questions before you answer them? So this happens every day. Someone says something, oh, this is going on. And then there's this kind of space. Oh, this is what's going on. It's really hard. And then they kind of look at you like, what do you think? But they don't actually ask for your help. What's happening there? And what, and what happens if you start helping without them actually asking? But what's going on in such a person? What's going on in someone who's not asking for help, but sort of intimating that they're, they're giving you the sense that they want help without actually asking for it? They don't ask for help, but they make it look like they're asking for help. And then you go, oh, they're trying to get help. And then you give them a bunch of help. How likely are they to actually use it if they never really ask for it? You see, on, on an unconscious level, it can be a game because asking for help is vulnerable and that vulnerability opens up a space for the help to go in. You probably all had this experience where you asked for help and it was a difficult thing, but the process of getting to the place where you realize you needed help opens something in you. It opens an aperture where you're helpable and a lot of people will avoid that vulnerability And so they'll just sort of try to go around it and talk about their problems without actually asking for help. And then when somebody goes, oh, a helpful person wanting to help, gives them the help, that aperture was never opened, and then they don't use the help. How many of you have experienced this, right? Someone comes near you with the situation, and you give them all this advice, and then they don't use it at all? Come on, everybody's experienced that, right? What happened? They never really asked you for help. They weren't in a vulnerable, help me place. So even though it can seem kind of devious and playful when I require people to ask me questions before I answer them, I'm, I'm not just messing with them. I'm actually trying to get help support them to open that aperture so that they're, they're actually helpable. 
that and I have a self-interest in being listened to. I don't like helping people who aren't going to use what I tell them. (laughs) That gets old really fast. When someone doesn't ask for help like that to an authority, what they're doing is they're staying in the oppressor mind mentality. They're staying in, they're they're abdicating their own self-authority and they just kind of spill their difficulties. It's the same way when someone, when an employee comes to you and they bring problems without proposed solutions, that's a kind of abdication of self-authority. They're, they're pretending, I don't know what to do. And it's very tempting. The supervisor gets hooked by that. The supervisor goes, oh, you don't know what to do? Well, here I come. Let me put on my cape and my boots. And now I am the super supervisor. I never really thought that. Like Superman, supervisor, the supervisor shows up. Oh, that's really funny. The supervisor shows up with S on their chest and the boots and the cape and everything and says, you don't know what to do? No problem. Let me tell you what to do. In content, problem solved. In context, the employee remains disempowered, gets to hold on to the story they have about themselves that they didn't know what to do. The supervisor gets to hold on to the story about themselves that they're a supervisor and that they're doing their job when they're actually not. And everything stays the same, which is actually what both people unconsciously want in such a situation. The employee comes and says, I don't know what to do. Will you solve my problem in a way that is comfortable so I don't have to change? That's what's being said there. And the supervisor says, oh, I get a sense of control and and self-esteem from having answers. And uh, rather than engaging with you and pushing you into the unknown, which is actually uncomfortable for me. So, yeah, I'm game. That's what's going on there. And they shake hands and they say, let's make sure nothing changes. And but solve this problem in content. And then we'll go home at night and complain about all the contextual issues like, you know, the culture and how it feels here and how nobody appreciates me. Because that's all, those are the results that are being created in such a moment. Crazy, huh? Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Be sure to visit clearandopen.com for the latest tools, articles, and free resources to help you on your journey. Thanks for listening and bye for now.